Welcome to the Echo Boards Review course. Uh, we had talked about this uh, building blocks presentation. Uh, after completing the physics and hemodynamics workshop, I think this would be very relevant because this reviews the key concepts uh, that are most relevant to the examination as well as for your clinical echocardiography. So based on uh, you know feedback from uh, multiple attendees as well as feedback from uh, multiple fellows and residents, I've compiled this presentation as the most important clinical concepts that are essential to learn and practice echocardiography. So let's see what those concepts are. As I understand, the most important ones are the physics of two-dimensional imaging as well as Doppler, Bernoulli's equation, continuity equation, and secondly, last week, this is what normal physiology and normal functions of cardiac function and you know valvular function is that we'll get to that uh, in other portions of the course. But let's get to the most important ones. Uh, the concepts that we're going to cover today are physics, hemodynamics, image optimization, nabology, uh, how does the display look, uh, the Doppler, color flow Doppler, chamber pressure estimation, clinical cases, left ventricle, right ventricular function, uh, basic valve, systolic function, diastolic function. Uh, we may not get to the last part of it because we're going to keep that for a review by other faculty during this ECHO Boards review course. So let's get to basic ultrasound physics. So why physics is important? Physics is important because speed of sound is constant in a given medium. It is only a cycle of transmission and reflection. Uh, we cannot reflect any better than we transmit, so that's the most important thing. And what, trans what gets transmitted is in our control, what gets reflected is not. So we have to optimize the transmission from the machine. So why physics is important again, the questions to answer are, what do you want to see? And how well do you want to see? That's, these are the two most important questions that determine the conduct of your examination that you do during uh, clinical echocardiography. Next one is, if, if, you, if you select on what do we want to see, the next question to answer is, is it superficial structure or is it deeper in the tissues? Is it static or is it mobile? Do we want to optimize the image or do we want to not see that structure at all or we want to avoid a certain structure? So these are all the questions that need to be answered uh, before you start a clinical examination. So the most important question is what do I need to know to answer these questions? First is superficial versus deep because depth of penetration is determined by frequency. So therefore the transducer choice is the first uh, uh, decision to make when starting a clinical echocardiographic examination. Both penetration and frequency and wavelength have an inverse relationship, which means higher the frequency, the lower the penetration into the tissues, which means if you want to see a deeper structure, you got to have a low, tra low frequency transducer. And if you want to see a superficial structure, a higher frequency transducer is more desirable. And this brings into question the fundamental important concept of clinical ultrasonography, and that is the relationship of wavelength and frequency. As we all know that as frequency increases, wavelength decreases. That this determines this relationship determines the acoustic variables of all a single pulse as well as pulse ultrasound. And if wave frequency is twice that of the other, the wavelength will be half. And the most important relationship that you need to remember is that wavelength is 1.4 millimeters per microsecond of frequency. But if you want to remember anything, that would be that wavelength and frequency have inverse relationship. The higher the frequency, the less the penetration, better the resolution. The lower the frequency, more the penetration to the tissues, and less the resolution of the transducer. So for a super superficial structure, we need to have a higher tra frequency transducer. For a deeper structure, we need to have a lower frequency transducer. So that's question number one. Then the next question is, how well do you want to see it? That's the resolution, that's your position in space or in time. So one is location, second is motion, and the third is the field of view. These are 
the three fundamental principles that determine what I call this thing as the holy triangle of imaging, which means how good you want to see it, how much you want to see it, and how fast you want to see it. This determines, these three factors determine your entire echocardiographic examination. And what do you need to know to do these things? First is resolution, and the second is Doppler, which is the ability to appreciate motion, whether this is going towards you, away from you, and that's, that's the two most important things. How good is spatial resolution? That is defined as your ability to accurately identify a position in space. That is your spatial resolution. Now there are three types of resolutions. Axial, which is your ability to see things front to backwards, which is determined by your spatial pulse length, if you remember. Second is your lateral resolution, that ability to identify the distance between two objects that are lying side by side. That's lateral resolution, if you remember from your physics workshop. And finally, elevation resolution, to correctly identify whether the structure is above the scan plane or below the scan plane. Axial resolution is determined by your spatial pulse length. Lateral resolution is determined by the, by the narrowest point of the, of the beam, and that's the focal zone. How fast is temporal resolution? That your ability to accurately identify motion in space. That's one of the most important things in echocardiography to appreciate that. For example, as you can see, spatial resolution will be taking a great picture of Niagara Falls. This is the one that I took uh, with a Nikon D90 of the one on the left. It's a great picture with a great two-point resolution. However, on the right side is a movie of the, of, the same, of the same location in Niagara Falls. Whereas you can appreciate motion, but your two-point discrimination is not as great as the one on the picture on the left side. Therefore, like everything else in life, there are trade-offs here. Trade-off number one being, if you want to see too good, you have to compromise on the motion part of it. If you want to see too fast, then you have to, ident you have to compromise on your spatial resolution. And how much you want to see is essentially your sector size. That is the ability to see a wider field of view, and that's called the sector size. Therefore, like everything else in life, you can't have best of everything. Depends on what is the most important thing to you. If you want to see a large sector size, you have to compromise on the spatial and temporal resolution. For a spatial resolution to be the best, the most optimal, the sector size as well as temporal resolution will be Suffer, will be suffering. And lastly, if you want to appreciate the best of motion, then spatial resolution and sector size will be compromised.